Welcome to National Focus. I'm Jana Hector. Coming up, Dominica's Prime Minister addresses the nation one month after Tropical Storm Erica. We are on the road to recovery. Dominica has bounced back miraculously. And government's One Tablet Per Child initiative has taken off. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. Thanks for staying with us. A draft assessment report undertaken by a team led by the World Bank estimates that the cost of damage, losses, and reconstruction of the island's infrastructure following Tropical Storm Erica is more than $1 billion. This was confirmed by the Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt in his address to the nation on Tuesday evening. On Friday, 25th September 2015, the government received a draft assessment report which was undertaken by the team led by the World Bank and which included development partners and agencies such as the Caribbean Development Bank, the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, the UNDP, PAHO, FAO, World Food Program, OACS Commission, and the University of the West Indies. The draft report estimates damages, losses, and costs to rebuild infrastructure at EC $1.298 billion. Meantime, the International Monetary Fund began a mission in Dominica on September 25th. Honorable Prime Minister Skerritt explained that during that mission, the macroeconomic framework will be reviewed and updated. The mission will assist government in preparing a framework that will take into account the significant level of investment that government must make and establish a plan that will guide fiscal operations. Evacuees of areas hard hit by Tropical Storm Erica will be temporarily relocated to four guest houses this week. This was confirmed by Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt as he addressed the nation on Tuesday. There are currently over 300 persons residing at nine designated shelters across the island. Currently, there are 322 persons in nine designated shelters across Dominica. Arrangements have been made to relocate 130 persons or 46 families currently at the Dominica Grammar School and four families at the Rosa Youth Center to temporary housing at Springfield Guest House, Kent Anthony Guest House, Mr. Clean Guest House, and St. Amy's Guest House. It is expected that all the Pidisavan residents currently residing at the shelters will be given priority to move to new housing accommodations by tomorrow, Wednesday, 30th September. Another component of the relocation process is the transfer of 17 persons housed at the Rosa Primary School to be accommodated at the Rosa Youth Center. Over 800 houses were destroyed by mudslides and flooding associated with the passage of Tropical Storm Erica. The Honorable Prime Minister explained that reconstruction, repairs and resettlement will be a very costly venture. Based on the field assessment assessments to date, Coupled with information from the Central Statistics Office, over 890 homes have been destroyed or uninhabitable due to the imminent risk of further destruction. The cost of resettlement, reconstruction, and repairs to these homes, housing a total of 4,229 individuals, is at a staggering EC $91,194,819 or United States dollars $33,565,762. To date, several possible housing solution scenarios have been examined and we are taking them all on board as we fully appreciate the urgency of the need to have families resettled in as permanent and comfortable a setting as possible. We are indeed grateful 
to the government of Venezuela for the prompt commitment and commence, and commence delivery of 300 Petrocasa houses. Officials are now working feverishly to finalize plans for the siting of these units with the Jubik area being the first targeted for 50 such units. Government is currently in negotiations with several governments, donor agencies and private developers to formulate designs for long-term housing solutions. A promise made by the Labour Party administration during the 2014 general election has been fulfilled. Students of the Peer Child Secondary School were the first to receive the promised one tablet per child aimed at giving all students equal access to the internet and technology for their educational advancement. The program was launched today, Wednesday, September 30th, at the Prayer Charles Secondary School. President of Dominica, His Excellency Charles Savre and Mrs. Savre, the Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, representative of the Ambassador of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela to Dominica, as well as several members of Cabinet, were part of that historic event. Today we are here to enhance your ability to learn give you greater opportunities for learning by the One Tablet Per Child initiative. And we're going to ensure that all of you have access to the technology. Because I know many of you here whose parents can't afford who you need to get a tablet or laptop, but your parents can't afford it. Honorable Minister for Information, Kel Vadaru, revealed that the students will receive ASOS MemoPad 8 tablets, one of the most popular and most efficient brands of tablets. As Minister for Information, Science, Telecommunication and Technology, Honorable Daru says the tablets are testimony of government's commitment to provide tools to create a smart classroom environment. Technologies have opened windows of opportunity for us to see and explore the wonderful world. As a result, the government of Dominica has identified the use of information and communication technology as a key priority to radically transform and enhance our educational sector. Additionally, this one tablet per child initiative breaks the barriers of socioeconomic status where some can afford and others are left at a disadvantage. Technology can be seen as a double-edged sword based on how it is used. Young people, I want to urge each of you to engage in positive and uplifting activities with the technology that's at your fingertips. Avoid cyberbullying. Avoid posting inappropriate pictures on social media. Avoid sites that promote violent behavior and pornography. The Honorable Member of Parliament for Grand Bay, Justina Charles, says that this initiative further proves that government is addressing all factors that may negatively impact students' academic pursuits. The One Tablet Per Child Initiative allows every student equal opportunity to use IT as a tool to enhance learning since we believe that quality education empowers people to take advantage of opportunities around them. It helps children get knowledge, information, and life skills they need to realize their full potential. This is what this program is aiming to achieve, realizing your full academic potential. She charged parents with the responsibility to show appreciation by ensuring that the devices are well taken care of. The parents and students expressed their own gratitude for this initiative. Well, I'm excited and uh, very satisfied that they fulfill their promise to us. A lot of things are being put on the internet now. That will be a very good guide for me, for my SBS especially. Since they are due, they will like, help me get um, past papers online and that will be really helpful. Everybody keeps saying no tablet, go by Jolly's pharmacy and get tablets. But today it's evident that the tablets is right here. 
Well, today I feel very happy because of that she's going to receive a tablet where she will be able to do her work because she used to go to the library to do her work, but now she'll be able to do it at home, so I'm very happy about that. I recall a friend of mine sent something on my WhatsApp for me. We had three monkeys were dancing and they said we were full and at the end they were giving us some coconut tablets. But as I can say today, Mila, Lebo Katwavai, me tablet la, you take tablet coco, me say pa tablet coco, the tablet la, he ev, and merci bon dieu ev, me me pie me, and I said thank God for him and we are praying for him and for his government. The Isaiah Thomas Secondary School will receive their tablets on Monday, October 5th, followed by the Portsmouth Secondary School, the Castle Bruce Secondary, and the Northeast Comprehensive Secondary Schools. The tablets are fully financed by the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. Nothing could stop us from delivering your tablets to you. Not even Danny, not even Erica, not even Grace. You're watching National Focus. Coming up, 25 students get education support from Adria. Stay with us. Wash your hands. I am Adora Tuse, health educator from the Ministry of Health. Proper hand washing protects against the spread of many common illnesses and germs. Wash your hands often with soap and water, or you may use a hand sanitizer. Remember, clean hands save lives. Protect yourself. A message. From the health promotion of the Ministry of Health. Welcome back. Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has applauded Dominicans residing abroad for promptly reaching out to their family and friends following Tropical Storm Erica. Within days, within weeks, and all now, relief supplies have been flowing from Dominicans abroad at a rate and of a quantity that we have never seen before. Dominicans abroad love this country. Dominicans abroad love and care for their families and friends back home. We are proud and honored to have such a focused and committed army of compatriots who did not need to be told a second time that help is needed in the homeland. The Adventist Development Relief Agency, ADRA, has demonstrated support to education in a big way. On Wednesday, ADRA, in collaboration with the South Leeward Mission of Seventh-day Adventists, presented a check of $25,000 to the Dominica State College to help fund the education of 25 students. Local ADRA coordinator Nurse Priscilla Prevo applauded the quick action of the South Leeward Mission in response to the devastation caused by Tropical Storm Erica. She revealed that in its response, the mission placed a special emphasis on education. These countries, after we set the call, sent the call out that we were in distress and we had a disaster, they started raising funds towards the relief effort here in Dominica. And they decided that a lot of people would be giving to different things. They would send food, they would send clothing, they would send probably money or so. But they decided that they wanted to, to um, relieve the education or to assist with the education situation here in Dominica. And they would realize that a lot of students would have lost their, their books, their uniforms, their whatever it is, and thought that they would want to assist in that regard. So they have collected, or they collected within, I must say almost a week, within a week they collected $75,000 that they have sent to us in Dominica through wire transfer and have asked us as ADRA to manage these funds. Each scholar will receive $1,000. The coordinates explain how these funds are to be used. This money is divided in three parts. 
$500 will go towards your tuition for the semester, $300 towards uniform and school supplies. So if you are still short of books or you want an extra shirt, whatever it may be, some of you may not have your uniforms yet. So that will help. And also um, transportation. So the other $200 will go towards transportation. I think that will certainly help in relieving your situation, financial situation, that you can focus on your studies. We know that there are many more persons who need. However, this is the first um, attempt. And uh, if more funds come, then the others who are in need will also, um, we can look at this. This is part of the address response here in Dominica. Scholarship recipient Chantal Tit of Petit Savan welcomes the assistance from Adra. I was really affected by a tropical storm Erica because my home got flooded very badly and I lost all my clothes, my school books, everything. So I feel very great and thankful for receiving this scholarship. I would like to say thank you to the agency who gave it to us and I feel very good. Earlier this month, Adra donated more than $30,000 towards relief and recovery following Tropical Storm Erica. Labour Party caretaker for Wesley Athena Benjamin is reporting that government's efforts to provide clean, portable water for schools in the area is progressing satisfactorily. Following the passage of Tropical Storm Erica, schools across the island were challenged, mainly by the absence of portable water. Benjamin, in an exclusive interview with GIS News on Tuesday, indicated that the nation's water resource management company, Duasco, has been working steadily to assist the community's students. At the Wesley um, Primary School, there was some issue with the, um, um, the plumbing. So Duasco, and I've been in communication with the Duasco um, manager, Mr. Bernadette Enough, and he came and sent up his crew and I think the principal there, I went at the school and I saw the work that they were doing. They had to dig up the pipes to get where the leak was and then they did some um, bypass of some pipe. And the Wasco came with water and there are two tanks at the um, primary school that they clean those tanks and then they replenish the water. So right now school is open at the primary school. Benjamin also highlighted progress made at the Northeast Comprehensive Secondary and the Woodford Hill Primary School. At the Northeast Comprehensive, the, the Wasco supplied them with a tank with water. So I think this is the second week of school. I was there when they had the General Assembly for the opening of school and the teachers and the uh, person from Environmental Health was there to talk to them about ways they can you know, conserve water. And at Woodford Hill, there is a tank there that the Wasco installed and replenished the water. So school started last week. So everything is running smoothly. With the difficulties we have, we still manage to cope. And I must say thanks to Bernadette Enough and the Wasco for trying to help us. Before we leave, two announcements. The Environmental Health Department of the Ministry of Health and the Environment informs the public that sections of the Rosa River that is below the Baffa State Bridge and the Dominica-China Friendship Bridge are contaminated with sewage and other pollutants. This is due to damaged sewer lines in those areas. Users of the Rosa River below the Bath Estate Bridge and the River Mouth are hereby notified to cease the following activities immediately until further notice. Fishing, bathing, swimming, washing of clothes and household utensils, and collecting water for washing vehicles. Tawasco is working expeditiously to rectify the problem. Please be guided accordingly. All interested individuals of the Salibia constituency are asked to register to participate in a furniture building module to be facilitated by Mr. Alexis Prince. The training module will be launched on Monday, October 5, 2015 at the Old Salibia School. For more information about the furniture building training module, please contact Kozie Fedrick, Development Officer in the Ministry of Cardinago Affairs at 266-3377. 613-5518 or 
Interested persons can also contact Honorable Cassius Daru, the parliamentary representative for the constituency, at 235-0088. And that's the English news. Mark for St. Louis is next with the Creole highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel Creole. Non, moi, c'est Mark for St. Louis. Premièrement, le gouvernement Dominique met mis en place pour l'allocation famille qui est affecté par Colton Erika. Parole celle-là sorti au premier ministre Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt pendant une adresse nationale à Madi. Si le premier ministre Skerritt, mon qui était en Dominique Grammar School et puis Rosa Youth Center, qui était en Springfield Guest House, Kent Anthony, Mr. Clint et puis St. James Guest House. Et des Monty Savan qui a resté en Dominique Grammar School et d'autres locations, qui a pris priorité pour la réallocation. Les gens qui ont à l'école primaire Rosso, qui ont été à l'allocation en Rosso Youth Center, ont été à l'allocation pour l'école qui a été réouvert. Le premier ministre Skerrit dit que Dominique a été challengé à faire Kai, si l'on s'est situé à cela, et puis plus de 800 avec 90 maisons sous des trucs, ou bien les gens qui ont été à l'allocation encore. Et les trois cas ont été à l'allocation de la dommage. Le premier ministre a dit que le gouvernement a gardé toutes possibilités pour que les gens soient bien confortables. Et aussi, il a remercié Venezuela pour la maison de la maison et la communauté de la qui a aussi fait attention à ce qui est 5 ans. Le gouvernement a aussi fait une négociation et une agence de l'autre pays pour faire une assistance à les gens qui sont affectés. Le premier ministre a dit que 91 millions de dollars, c'est autant d'argent que le gouvernement a pani. Mais il y a une négociation négociations bien formidables pour taper grant, ça c'est l'argent nous parler pour payer vie, loan et puis joint venture pour conduire le programme qui est tout mon pays là. En d'autres nouvelles, le résident de Big bien satisfait et puis le gouvernement Dominique a adressé cette situation et puis il poste Erika. Parole celle là sorti en même panama, honorable Dr. Kenneth Darrow. Il y a de bons spirits, comme on a visité, il y a des petits meetings, il y a des de trois jours, il y a des pompes, des pompes, il y a des besoins pour travailler avec nous. Mais moi, je suis satisfait avec la réponse du gouvernement. Ce que je veux dire, c'est 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 que je veux dire, Cloud Nev, you did Nev Noe near Silver Lining. Me mo kwe Silver Lining sa a put the big si opportunity pou fe a village ki pli sif, ki pli am avanse, ewe pou pou start am from 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 new all over again. Epi finalman man palaman pou la plain Honorable Peter Saint Jean ka fe pa wall ki meeting ki chain epi wezina delis pou diskete situasyon Erika te on sukse. Meeting sa la te chain a simen pase. Meeting là qui nous tient samedi, c'est un véritable bon meeting. Puisque mon kakwe, ça nous te kafe, c'est pour présenter bah ces peuples en délice, boutique et la plaine, ça gouvernement qui a capturé pour faire et pour pour nous trouver radio, pour nous tenir radio, ça y est qui a capturé. Et y a dit nous, moi moi voulais dire y a un bit et bit là nous te capturé faire, nous tenir quatre bits qui nous te kafe. Mais ces ces villages là, ces ces mon village là dit nous non. Il y a qui nous a proposé pour faire qui n'est qui pas nécessaire. Ça, c'est nous qui a Spring Bridge. Il y a dit si nous avons fait un chimé neuf, nous avons mis un zip line et nous avons fait un pont neuf, il n'est pas nécessaire pour le gouvernement dépenser l'argent pour faire un Spring Bridge. Et c'est ça que nous avons regardé pour nous. Nous sommes bien contents que nous avons discuté avec ces gens-là et ils ont un meeting qui était bien bon. Merci, madame. Ça, c'est tout pour nous. Nous avons fait un pour à présent. Non, moi, c'est Marc Fousse Au revoir. Coming up next, what an Epsom salt bath can do for you. Epsom bath salts have many physical and mental health benefits. Epsom salts are a combination of magnesium and sulfate. From skin ailments like eczema to poison ivy, Epsom salts can help heal your skin with its mineral-rich properties and help keep skin smooth and prevent wrinkles. The sulfate levels in Epsom salts can also help rid the body of any heavy metals or toxins.
And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica and follow our Twitter at gisdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here in the GIS News production team, I'm Jana Hector. Thank you for watching.